We have undertaken this research because we have believed that it is justifiable to fill a gap in our knowledge. All of the abstractions I do of my work now are based on the human body. So I'm always incorporating the human body into my work. The transformation that occurred in my work was in part due to the Kinsey Institute and the research I was doing there. One of the important tenets for our research, and it's been the case since the Institute was first founded by Dr. Kinsey, is really understanding diversity in sex, gender, people's intimate lives. And I say that because when we look at Dr. Kinsey's history, he was an evolutionary biologist. And the bread and butter of an evolutionist is understanding variation. It was a zoological approach to understanding diversity in people's sexual lives and well, their sexual behaviors. I have so much respect for Dr. Kinsey. And he was just interested in an objective knowledge of experience. As a sculptor, it's a constant trying to learn how to look objectively at my own work, at student work. So there's just parallels there for me um, that I resonated with in reading about his research. And so it just feels like an honor. He needs someone to really capture his intensity, his good looks, his hair. He's got great hair. He's got great hair. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So what I've tried to do with this piece is bring in a, a contemporary twist and also reference like Kinsey's metaphor of bringing light into darkness. What I saw as his action pose. For Kinsey, it was doing 18,000 interviews of, and gathering people's sexual history. The other part of that though that was so, so interesting to me was the code that he developed to do so. I would be curious if I saw a series of rando checks and dashes and across from him, I will have another chair, but this chair will be acrylic or some kind of glowing element so that at night you can sit in the lit chair and the tablet will also be illuminated. So it kind of draws your sexual interview history into current times, you know, metaphorically. <laughs> we'll take off the head. And as far as the neck, you have a wire tool you can cut it with, okay. What I'll probably do, you said the bow tie comes out, right? It does. So I think we should take that off. We can preserve that on, on another block. And then um, I'd like to see, you know, I can kind of hold it around here and as we bring it back, you can kind of guide it a little bit to where the line is, but uh, it's really tight in this area. You ready? Emotionally, spiritually? side so it'll all be very fixable. Got it? You can just lift up yep. so I think it's BAM! This is real hard. So the process that we're working on right now is we're, we're prepping the sculptures essentially for the rubber material going over. I love teaching. I teach figure here, and that's been like my greatest joy. By still engaging with work like this, I will have students see and walk through the whole process. I have felt incredibly supported by my school. They really are excited about me getting to incorporate this with students. And we all want more, more connections across campus. So just the more we do it, I think the easier it becomes um, and the richer everything becomes. When I think about what the mission of the Kinsey Institute is, I think in many ways it's to remain a beacon. We sit on a legacy that allows us to continue to ask those questions, defending our, our academic freedoms, exploring people's intimate lives. This group, the Kinsey Institute, is just a fantastic group of individuals. My hope is that it is going to spark curiosity about who Kinsey was. And I hope it creates a new destination on campus that shares a little bit more of the history of uh, the Kinsey Institute so they can keep working. There's so much to learn and to gather and to grow from.